What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're going to take a look at the El Rocio Czar. Before we get into it, I would like to ask that you take a moment, hit the like, subscribe, maybe, you know, leave a nice comment or something as we get into this video, uh, but I'm really excited to share this one with you. This is a South Korean espresso machine that is being distributed in the United States by Prima Coffee. They lent this to me, so thank you very much, Prima. Really appreciate it. Uh, and they actually got to make a couple of changes on the machine uh, to make this like version two. So the Czar has been around at, at least since 2015, if not a little bit before, um, and they've been, they've been making this machine and it's been it's been a staple, at least in South Korea, and so it's now making its way into the United States market. And so uh, Prima has partnered with them, has been able to make a couple of changes like uh, um, um, making it user-friendly to change the OPV and a couple other things like a more wide rotary knob, which we'll get to here in a second. Anyway, let's go ahead and take an overview of this machine. So as you can see, we have two nice knobs here. This one opens the hot water spout. This one opens the steam wand. We have a 58 millimeter porta filter. We have this, what looks like a massive drip tray, but in reality, it's actually kind of, you know, much smaller inside than what you would think based off how it looks. That slides just right on. We have two pressure gauges, one for the group, one for the steam wand. Um, up here is where you add the water. So we have the top of the water tank here, and then inside of it, you have another lid, which is the plastic lid. Now what's odd about this is the water, you can plumb this in and you get a plumb kit, you can get a plumb kit with it. But to plumb it in, the water goes to this water reservoir to fill up. And you can see that there is this tube right here, as you can see right here, this tube is connected to this lid. This tube is where the water would come from if you plumbed it in. So in order to take this out to fill it up in your sink, you would have to disconnect the tube to pull it out. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to take it out. So that is one of the small, I guess, one of my, uh, an irksome feature to me. If you want to fill this up, for instance, I had mine sitting back here as I was testing it, but I have this shelf here. And so in order to fill it with water, I would have to pull it out in order to get a jug to dump water in here because there's no way of removing that water, that, this, this system unless you want to unplug and, and, and go that route. But anyway, so that's kind of an irksome design qualm. Um, and we'll look at a few others that I have with this machine, but um, it holds a decent amount of water. It has a 600 milliliter brew boiler and it has a 1.8 liter steam boiler. Now for reference, the Lalit Bianca has an 800 milliliter brew boiler and a 1.6 uh, liter steam boiler. Uh, and the, another one would be like the La Marzocco Linea Mini has a 3.5 liter steam boiler. So what you're going to have here is you're going to have good steam pressure. It's not going to be, it won't rival the Linea Mini, but it definitely rivals that of the Lilit Bianca, just, just to give you an idea. Uh, and the, like the Breville dual boiler is about one liter. So it has a bigger steam boiler than the Breville dual boiler. But as I always say, that stuff doesn't really matter unless you're in some sort of rush and you want to be able to steam it faster. You can get silky milky on any of these machines. So I don't really care about the steam boiler that much. Um, anyway, so this is a dual boiler machine. So there's, there are two boilers in it and there are three PID controllers. There is one for the steam one, one for the group head, and then uh, one for the boiler and one for the group head itself. So what you have is actually, and we'll get into this more in depth in a bit, but what you have here is some very, very good thermal stability, all right? And it's kind of the, it's the, it's my primo thing about this machine is that thermal stability. Okay. So let's continue looking at this machine. So this is probably the most unique part of it, is this little controller you get with your machine. Now this knob is to control the pressure. So this is a fully capable pressure profiling machine, but the way that it does it is this knob, it's more like a potentiometer. It modulates the voltage going to the pump so it can control the amount of water coming out. Now what's unique about this machine is this control box. So on it you can have you can set the time, which obviously I don't have the time set, it's not 12.06 a.m. You can set the temperature just by clicking it, you can go up and down, I have it set to 96 degrees. Uh, you can set a turn on time, a turn off time, a sleep mode. Essentially you can do everything in this. You can set up two different profiles using pre-infusion. You can um, you know, measure the amount, you can put a blind basket inside your port filter, measure the amount of time it takes for pressure to build, and you can use that time as your quick fill, right? So your pre-infusion time prior to the low infusion that begins it. So you can, you can manually program two different styles of shots using this controller. So 
uh, yeah, you can click, and then when you click the time, you have the option to click manual, which is the mode I'm on here. You can click shot number two that we have profiled, or you can click shot number one that we have profiled. All right, so here are the three behind the time. All right, so I keep it on manual mode. Now, in order to enact shots one or two, you would click this button right here, right down here. So this button, if you have it set to shot one or two on your controller dial, this button right here behind the, the water, uh, water spigot, that's what's going to enact shot one or two depending on what is highlighted on the knob, okay? And then of course the power button is here and the, the actual power switch is at the back under the back frame, okay? So you turn that on and then you can activate it with a switch. Um, I actually really don't like the position of these switches. Uh, I like to wipe down the back if my shot squirts or something, for, uh, sprays from channeling. I like to wipe it down and sometimes I accidentally turn the machine off or sometimes I accidentally hit this and start up another shot. So that's kind of troublesome that they're very easy to press buttons. As you see, they just, I have it on manual mode so it's not gonna enact anything. But they're really easy to press if you're wiping down. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of irksome, but it is what it is. So anyway, this controller, you have that rotary knob that controls pressure. And since I have this in manual mode, you're gonna be able to see, I, I start the shot here. And if you listen closely, you can hear how that pressure is, in, is climbing and, uh, and, and going back down. Well, not necessarily pressure because there's no resistance, but that flow rate is going up and then back down, okay? And so when we have the puck in, and we'll do this here in a second, you'll be able to see how I can control the pressure based off of the position on the potentiometer right here on this rotary knob. So you're going to be able to control, heighten, and lower the pressure with that, which is kind of neat. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of a separate control box. I kind of wish this was integrated into the machine. It's just another thing kind of on my counter. Um, You hear that? That steam wand's finally building pressure. That's cute. Um, but yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of that uh, control box, but anyway. Um, inside here, there is a, a kind of a, a floater bobber, kind of like what you have in your toilet. And it, whenever that bobber goes down because the water level is low, it actually tells you on the controller it's time to refill before you actually run out, so you don't run out mid-shot, which I think is a really nice feature, actually. Okay. So I want to talk a, a little bit about some of the kind of design qualms that I have with the machine. One of the big ones is I can't stand how long the steam wand is. It does not sit here. Look at this. You can kind of, you can finagle it to get it all the way over here. But once it's here, you can't put your port filter in because the steam wand's in the way. So if you have it sitting out here and the pressure is built, it's just going to drip into a puddle right below. So as you see, there's already some splashes down there because the pressure has now built. We now have some pressure building in the steam wand. So as that pressure is built, or if you have just used it and you have it sitting here, it's just gonna drip into a puddle. You have to like finagle it to get it over the drip tray, which I'm not a huge fan of. The water spigot is also incredibly massive, which I don't really understand the need for something this large for it, I guess, if you're wanting to like take a huge cup to fill up off to the side, but even still, just seems a little bit overkill. But, you know, it is what it is. I think the machine itself is beautiful. I, re I really love these knobs. I've seen online there's some that come with like this Italian leather covering the knob. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really nice and the, the panels can be in different colors. They can be in a lighter wood or in black. Um, so I think it's a beautiful machine, but yeah, I'm not a fan of the steam wand. I'm not a fan of its position to this side where you have to click the port filter in. So essentially you have to have the steam wand out like that. I'm not a huge fan of the position of the pressure gauges. I wish they were up higher. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to watch down here when you're pulling the shot and playing with the rotary knob itself. Um, but yeah, okay, enough of that. Um, let's go ahead and pull a shot and I'm gonna talk about thermal stability because you better believe I threw a skase on this bad boy. Okay, all right, and okay, so I've got coffee loaded into the portafilter, put 17 grams in. What I want you to pay attention to is the pressure gauge here. As I turn the rotary knob, you're gonna see the, the needle's gonna go up and down, and notice how it bounces, and that's because it's pulsing energy. It's controlling the pulses of the voltage to the pump itself. So it's not gonna be a smooth uh, profiling experience in the sense that that needle's gonna be bouncing, okay? So you're ready. And I'm gonna start with a quick fill, and I'm gonna let that pressure rise up to about seven or eight bar. There we go. 
Oh, I missed the cup. And I'm slowly just ramping down the pressure. So as you see here, the needle, as that puck is eroding, I'm just lessening the pressure on it, lessening the flow through the puck. But I want you to listen here. I'm going to crank up. See that? Cranked up the pressure. Now I'm going back down. Now there's not much integrity left to the puck, so I'm not going to be able to get the pressure much higher than this. And then we're going to go back down. And then once more, let's see how high we can get it. Nice. We're still able to get six. Then go back down and off. And we have a four and a half ounce shot of espresso right here. Yum! I think I should take a sip of that because it's probably going to be insanely delicious. Of course, I'll be stirring with my collaboration spoon from Umeshiso and James Hoffman because what else am I going to stir with? Oh, yeah, this is going to be delish. This is my new profile. It's called Oscillation Station. Take one. It's a long name, I know. All right. This is going to burn my hand holding it because how hot that is. Zang, if anyone knows Wayne's World. Okay, so that was not tasty. But, so that's the idea. You're able to switch up the pressure based off of this rotary dial. You can, you can program two of the shots in there. But anyway, now on to the fun part. So I did a lot of shots using my skase. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the skase, Greg Skase created this in order to replicate a coffee puck so you can actually see what the temperature is at the puck itself, okay? You could stick a thermometer to the water coming out, but that's not going to uh, properly replicate what the conditions are like inside the group itself. Now, as I said earlier in the video, this has three PID controllers, including one at the group head, so it can give you that final jolt of energy in order to maintain the, the, the temperature you're wanting. Now, I set this to 96 degrees and I did many shots with different uh, varying in, uh, intervals between the shots. The first one, I let the machine sit cold for about an hour. I say cold, it was on, but I let this case sit in there for about an hour. I came, I flushed, and then I brewed, and I was able to get uh, almost to 96 degrees on the first shot. And then with each successive shot, it went up to about 95.2 to 95.4, and it stayed in that area even up to 90 seconds, okay, which is insanely incredible. Yes, it didn't match the temperature I set, but you can offset it. If you want to have 96 degrees, you can offset it to 97, and then you're going to have 96.2 to 96.4, somewhere around there. The stability, though, that thermal stability is insane. I decided to put it up against the Decent Express machine, which I have right back here. And whereas the decent stayed above the target temperature the whole time, there was a bigger fluctuation. This one, however, did not move. Once it hit 90, whatever it hit between 95.2 to 95.4, it stayed there the whole time and did not really waver. If it wavered, it was plus or minus one-tenth of a Celsius degree, okay? Incredible. Welcome, Slate. My dog's drinking some water. Everybody wants to see the dog, I know. Come here. Come here. Come here. Say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. Oh, I love to drink water while Daddy's making YouTubes. Yay. Okay. All right, now I have hair all over my black shirt. Par for the course. Um, but yeah, so the thermal stability on this is absolutely incredible. Uh, that is the number one plus about this machine. There, Like I said, there are some or irksome qualities about it. Like, I think there's some just silly design choices uh, like the tank not being not being able to pull it out unless you unplug it. Um, I think that the drip, this drip tray is really big and or it, without having much space for drip, the drip tray itself. And uh, the inside, there's not much volume for there to be waste. The steam one on this side, hanging that low, there's probably a puddle. Oh, yeah, there's already a puddle growing over there. I'm not a fan of that and how it's on the side where the porta filter is. Um, but outside of that. It pulls really nice espresso. You're able to have some fun with pressure profiling and it steams really great milk, just like everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this video with a little latte art. I'll, I'll do a little B-roll of me steaming some milk and throw a little latte art down. But anyway, thank you again for watching. Thanks as always. I'm super appreciative of everyone who gives me support. Um, thank you again, Prima, for sending this out to me to check out. I'm really excited about the future of Czar. Prima has some cool ideas on what they're going to be working with El Rocio on in order to improve this even further. And I'm looking forward to seeing what those improvements are. Uh, anyway, I hope you brew something tasty today and 